actually met someone who had never read Calvin and Hobbes, I would immediately just go to my desk, pull a book off, and say, here, take this. This will change your life. I've never met anyone who doesn't like Calvin Hobbes. I can't say that about any other strip. My initial impression when I saw him was, the guy's making it harder for the rest of us. Here was a strip that was much better drawn than anything in the papers, that had a really fresh perspective. It just took off. Everyone, you know, is united by their love for the strip, but everyone has a specific thing that they love about it. You know, Calvin's world is just huge. It doesn't stop. Bill's take was so fresh and so simple. Here he just took this idea and just blew it up into this wonderful relationship. His approach at philosophy, it was always bigger than just a little comic strip. As a professional cartoonist, I read it now, and you just see a master at his craft. I was very excited by it. Yeah, this, this is the um, first original I've ever seen. You have high art, like a painting, and then you have low art, which is the comic strip, and it's commercial and it's half work. Why is that? Has there ever been a character who was more built for licensing than Hoff? I was making these, and he was not. He was essentially throwing down the gauntlet and said, look, we've, we've lost something from the early part of the 20th century. There we go. People preserve the memory of Calvin and Hobbes as something very precious and personal. I've heard questions like, why are people so eager now? Why are the books so, so, so popular? You know, he hasn't been in newspapers in 15 years. As it's transcendent. That's the beauty of it. Have you written a letter to Watterson? I have a file, a Word file, on my computer. <laughs> and it's one line so far. All it says is, Dear Mr. Watterson. <laughs> very fitting. Nothing else. Not another word.